Welcome to this episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. Thanks for checking in after I was out of town in Baltimore last week. Let's get started with this case. I put this slide up because this is our first morning report after our move to the new hospital, and this was our entrance at our, at our old shop, so this is to pay homage to that place. This is the case of a side of AFib with RVR. Here's the EKG. All right, this gets handed to you while you're sitting in your pod. You take a look. Well, we've got a rapid, irregular heartbeat, right, going around about 150 in some spots down here, and maybe a little more spread out around 100 in this area. Okay, no real P waves that we can discern as we look in more of an isoelectric lead. We don't really have any QRS winding or QTC prolongation. So, anything else that's worth noting? Well. It, if we look at these inferior leads, we have some ST elevation here in 2, 3, AVF, pretty concerning. Look for reciprocal depressions. We have some in lead 1, lead AVL, V2, V3, all right? So we've got AFib with RVR, but we have what looks like a STEMI on our hands. So who, who is the patient? She's a 52-year-old female. She does have a history of AFib. She also has a history of hypertension. She's on metoprolol and aspirin. No other anticoagulation. She's presenting with chest pain. It's located in the center of her chest. It radiates up the left side of her face. It started this morning when she woke up. It's constant, pressure-like, associated with shortness of breath and nausea. She's saying all of the scary words. So again, let's look at this EKG. We do have this AFib with RVR, but yeah, we've got this... Elevation in 2, 3, AVF with reciprocal depressions anteriorly, and looks like even in our far laterally, we may have a little bit of elevation in V6. So what are your vitals? We have a temperature of 37, our heart rate's all over the place, 130s to 160s. Our blood pressure is 130 over 90. Respiratory rate 17, satting well on room air. So what do you want to do? Well, we at our hospital, we call 911 to activate the cath lab. We get her our, her aspirin, and then we roll out, right? Anything else you want to do? Well, we made the decision to give a beta blocker. She takes a beta blocker at home. She's in a rapid ventricular response to the 150s with a, with a good blood pressure with ongoing chest pain. And now we only gave 5 milligrams of IV metoprolol, but the thought here was to help control that rate pressure product. All right, something we think of more in our end STEMIs than we do in our STEMIs, but the decision was made to do that here. So what did the cath report find? A 100% proximal lesion in the first right posterior lateral coronary artery, which is probably why we saw a little bit of elevation in V6, but no evidence of atherosclerotic disease. A thrombectomy was attempted with intracoronary nipride and nitroglycerin, but no distal reflow. So how does this happen? No atherosclerotic disease, but 100% occlusion? That's because this wasn't a thrombus, but this was an embolus. She had an echo done during her hospital stay that showed thrombus formation with heavy spontaneous echo contrast in the left atrial appendage. So a piece of that uh, embolus, a piece of that clot in her left atria through an embolus and uh, went into her coronary vasculature. So during her hospital stay, she was on a 24-hour tyrafiban drip for her, the antiplatelet therapy. She was given IV metoprolol and IV nitroglycerin for aggressive blood pressure and heart rate control. And now she is on lifelong anticoagulation. So what are our take-home points? You've got to have that systematic approach to the EKG. Whatever your system is, stick to it. It would have been easy to chalk this up as chest pain in the setting of AFib with RVR. Not uncommon, not something we don't see every couple of days or so. But you got to, you got to find that STEMI. Okay? And think about your other causes of occlusion. This was a 52-year-old female with hypertension. But other than that, she had been pretty healthy, and this was an embolic and not a thrombotic or atherosclerotic disease. And then think about manager, managing that rate pressure product. Now, I'm not saying to give beta blockers in all your STEMIs. We don't need to do that. We think of this more in our end STEMI population, but in certain cases, it may be appropriate. So just have something to keep in the back of your mind. All right, guys. Hope everyone enjoyed the move to the new hospital. Hopefully things haven't been too stressful. And, in our new fancy uh, emergency department, let's keep our eyes open for those interesting cases.